having the ability to like detach, breathe, look at the situation and move forward without getting caught in a loop of thinking about it over and over and over and over again. I think it's really important. Welcome to the Agile Digital Transformation Podcast, where we explore different aspects of digital transformation and digital experience with your host, Tim Butera, Content and Community Manager at Agile Drop. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Our guest today is Austin Reed, seasoned digital nomad with eight plus years of experience and as well as the co-founder and automation expert at Horizon Dev LLC. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the importance of cultivating a strong mindset in order to stay resilient while also staying at the forefront of innovation. Austin, hey Austin, welcome to the podcast. Very happy to have you here today. Anything you'd like to add before we jump into the questions? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me too. I'm I'm very grateful to be here. And yeah, let's just jump right in. Okay, awesome. So the first question to kind of set the stage and, and kick the conversation off, why is it so important to have a strong mindset in today's world? Well, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> we could go at it from a business aspect or a world aspect. I think from a business aspect, you're going to face rejection almost every day. And if you're not facing rejection every day, then you're probably not doing the right things, right? <laughs> So, and not only with rejection, but like things happen, like you got to meet payroll some months, maybe you have a big client that just dropped off or got upset because of something and you got to understand how to like deal with those situations in, in a great manner. And so having the ability to like detach, breathe, look at the situation and move forward without getting caught in a loop of thinking about it over and over and over and over again, I think it's really important. And that translates all the way down to even like school when you get a bad grade or when you fail at something or even like on the street when somebody confronts you and you like, I don't know, maybe someone was having a bad day and you meet them on the street and then all of a sudden they're saying some bad things to you. What systems do you have in place for yourself in order to have a strong mindset while that's happening and to be able to take the higher moral ground and let it not affect you or maybe not let it not affect you but instead be able to analyze it abstractly in a way that doesn't hurt you and in a way you can learn from so Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's really important in a lot of different ways so you, you mentioned what systems do you have in place to kind of have a more healthy reaction and a more healthy response to all of this? What systems do you have in place for this? Yeah, so I mean, the first one is, is every morning I wake up and I do Muay Thai. And I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> if I go and I do Muay Thai and I spar with my trainer, that is the hardest thing I'm going to do all day long. <laughs> I promise you that. Him trying to hit me in the face and absolutely destroying me working <laughs> out <laughs> is really difficult. And then after when a client says something or when when you know I get a rejection on a, on a demo call or something, it's really kind of easy because I'm like, oh yeah, well, I mean, this morning, like this dude was trying to hit me in the face and now <laughs> you're just like, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... So um, that's definitely number one, just exercise in general, I think you could do across the board. Number two is having the ability to detach and, and be more abstract about what it is you're doing. So like, you have a problem that confronts you and whatever, just the ability to, to take a breath real quick, maybe to change context, to go out for a quick run, to go out to have a coffee with your girlfriend, or just something entirely different. Have a shower, meditate, play guitar, mm-hmm. you know, do just, just detach and then come back to it with a new fresh mindset where you're no longer stressed, where you're a little bit more open and stuff. And then one good exercise that I like is to look at the problem from outside. So you can look at it from the other person's point of view. And then you can look at the problem like, what would I do in if I had all the resources in the world, mm-hmm. how would I feel about this problem? Or in 10 years, is this going to matter? That's a good one. That's a really good one. Mm-hmm. And so once, once you bring the, con- the concept of extremes and the concept of time, it's really easy to say, oh, well, maybe this isn't that big of a deal. 
those are some great tips. And I think that the inability to detach is actually the root cause of so many problems in society and in our interpersonal relationship that could just be solved so much, so less, so quickly, just like this, with, with a snap of your fingers, if you just allow yourself that small amount of time for reflection and detachment, and then returning to whatever the issue is, you know, in a lot of cases, you'll realize that it isn't even a problem once you detach yourself from it and return to it. That's true. That's true. And sometimes problems also manifest as, as added benefits. You know, mm -hmm. like at first it's like, oh man, we have to get rid of one of our best employees because he did X, Y, Z, right? You're like, oh, that really sucks. But then you get rid of them and you notice that the dynamic of the team changes and all of a sudden they're doing a little bit better. You're like, oh, maybe he was, he was a bad apple or a bad player within the team. Or maybe you go and you do some hiring rounds and you find just an amazing rock star, right? It's like, wow, well, I've got this new guy who's a little bit cheaper than the old guy who's doing a better job now maybe this was a good thing instead of a bad thing right but you can't see that when you're like in the moment you're like oh my god i gotta i gotta fire like our our best guy like he didn't do this thing you know so mm -hmm. there are some added benefits sometimes if you let time lapse out and you let the game play itself you might be surprised sometimes mm -hmm. So this ability to detach and this uh, this capability of looking at the bigger picture, so to speak, this would be kind of some of the key elements of having a strong mindset, right? What, what would be some other important ones? Yeah, so every day waking up and making sure that you, you get your stuff done, understanding that like motivation is cool, but like you really got to like be a little bit more diligent and in doing things even when you don't want to do them that's really important for strong mindset so having the ability to just like force your mind to focus and i think focus is something that i'd love to talk about that is not talked about enough a lot of people there they're saying like work a lot of hours and this and that which is cool but it doesn't help if they're not quality hours mm -hmm. you know so the ability to no matter what's going on around you to shut everything out and focus on one thing and focus on it intently with with a high level of energy is huge it's absolutely massive and so like like imagine like you're having a, a weird day your girlfriend just kind of got in a fight with you whatever you get to work the ability to to shut that out sit down and to focus on one task it's really difficult, but if you can do that, then when you go back to your girlfriend, you're going to be coming from a detached mindset. You're not going to have that stress impulse response, which is huge, but you're also training your mind to be able to context switch into intense focus, mm -hmm. which is absolutely insane. So I think that's really important. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different things that really help you with a strong mindset it's i think it's not just conditioning your mind to be strong against feedback to be strong against oh i need to do this i think it's also the little things too mm -hmm. it's also giving yourself the time to recover that's really important too so for example if i i've noticed that if i push really hard like 12 hours a day every day with no days off for a long time i can usually do that for around like 15 16 days and then after that i i reach kind of like a burnout state mm -hmm. and so having little breaks in my day or little breaks like actually taking a day off a lot of new entrepreneurs they don't take days off you know what i mean and so actually detaching and taking that day off. And then when you take the day off, again, do 100% day off. Don't think about work. So when I started my business, it was really hard for me to transition between like enjoying and work. And so I would go to like enjoy a beach or something. And I was still thinking about work. I was bringing that energy with me. And I never truly recovered. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so once I was able to learn, again, to detach back to the first point, once I was able to learn to do that and to step away from the work itself, that allowed my mind to be free, to have some fun, some enjoyment, 
to relax. And then when I got back to work the next day, it was a lot stronger or the next time I got back to work. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a really important thing that I learned as well. Yeah, I think time off is definitely an indispensable part of, of any process of, you know, self-improvement or anything like that. You know, you, even like professional sports people, they'll, they'll incorporate, you know, days off into their training routines because you just can't be expected to, to perform optimally if you don't have some kind of contrast with that. Yep. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. I mean, even with the Muay Thai, like some days I have to text my trainer, I'm like, hey, man, I can't train today. Like my wrist is like hurting or something you know um it's i think it's the same with everything man it's like working out business life mm -hmm. uh strong mindset it, it all comes down to the to the key root core issues you know detaching being being resilient in a lot of different ways listening to feedback without necessarily taking it to heart it's like super mm -hmm. huge back to the detaching thing and then around habits too like being able to understand how your body works how to control your own habits because everybody's a little bit different you know like i work really great in the morning to midday but my co-founder he doesn't mm -hmm. and just knowing that difference that he works at night you know how many years did it take us to figure that out like quite a long time you know because like everybody else is used to this corporate structure and when you jump out of that that's that's really weird because you have to learn yourself you know and learn the levers of yourself i think part of having a strong mindset is just understanding how you do yourself work right mm. and that's really important a lot of people don't think about that that was a really great point but but I want to focus now a little bit on the business aspect and kind of tying to our the main title or the main topic of today's conversation. So sometimes in business, you know, staying resilient can be at odds with, you know, properly innovating and, be, and being at the forefront of innovation. I'm wondering how can developing and cultivating a strong mindset help somebody achieve both, you know, innovation while still staying resilient? Yeah. So as a business owner, we, we encounter a lot of distractions day by day. I run a software development agency. We do automation. So in our day to day, a lot of times people are trying to partner with us to do different platforms, different SaaS products, things like that. And a lot of them are really great ideas. A lot of them are amazing ideas. But if I was to take on some of those ideas, they might also set me back business wise because then I didn't have to take the resources. I didn't have to take the mental bandwidth. I have to plan out the projects. We have to take the money, the people, all those things and pivot it over. So how do you know that it's a good opportunity? Well, the short answer is, is that like, first of all, you kind of never do. You never do until you actually do the thing. But being able to really weigh out the pros and cons and look at the big picture of, oh, look, this is what I planned out for the year, okay? At the end of the year, my goal is to do this within my business structure to have these types of results to do this, blah, 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 blah right? Does this SaaS product fit within those goals? Yes or no? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And so being able to sit down and write like points of the SaaS product, like why would this benefit towards the end goal of the year and why would it not, I think is really important. It's definitely a hard thing to do though, because sometimes too, being able to innovate is like, say for example, like you need to get something done. Like I have the, at the goal at the end of this year. Well, being resilient in your mind is saying, well, look, I don't have the money to do this. So what are some other ways I could do this thing, right? And so you could think of, oh, you know, I have this friend who's really, really good at doing X, Y, Z. What if I traded services with him to be able to do that, right? And so that's another way of being resilient to innovate. It's like, okay, well, hey, I don't have the resources to do said thing. How do I get it done? Anyway? Who has the resources that I might be able to use or to partner with or to help out who can help me to get said thing done? So there's a lot of different ways to kind of think about it. That's something that we've done quite a bit is partner with other people who have helped brought us forward, helping them build software products. And in return, they give us services when it comes to sales or innovation or things like that. So that that's a really good point too. And so 
do you have any special techniques or any tips for maintaining a strong mindset even when you're faced with a lot of stress a lot of adversity a lot of failures maybe yeah it's hard man first of all stress builds especially as you grow so i think being in stressful situations repetitively is important and then practicing again detaching practicing breathing practicing and and like for me it might be you know meditating for somebody else it might be having a coffee you know what i mean it's like it's different for everybody really it goes back to like knowing how your body works if you understand how your body works how you can truly relax bring that into your daily practice somehow somehow even if it's for 15 minutes that way when you truly get stressed you can go back to that daily practice that you have drinking your coffee meditating whatever it is go back to your default to be able to to refresh your mind you know but also realize that stress isn't necessarily a bad thing stress can be a very good motivating factor too a little bit of stress is great it's amazing i mean andrew huberman even talks about stress stress is a very very good impulse driver for getting things done that's mm -hmm. amazing again you don't want it to go above a certain threshold right so at that point if it does start to get above certain thresholds maybe you're not working with the right types of clients you know or maybe it's showing you exposing a problem within your business you know, maybe you're stressed because you feel like you have too much work and you don't have time because you don't have systems in place to take care of XYZ processes, mm -hmm. right? And so that's another way to alleviate stress is to make sure you have SOPs for everything, you know, to make sure that you filter your clients. Like to work with me, we we say no to a lot of people. Like you gotta, I've got to be able to go out and have a beer with you for you to be my client. <laughs> if I can't do that, then we're not going to work together. And it's just that. And part of the reason why is because some of the most stressful moments I've had in business came from a client that came from a client that like I had bad feelings going in, but we needed the money anyway. And we decided to do the project and it just turned, it just turned on its head. And all, every time that I've had that bad gut feeling about a client, it's turned into a bad situation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so being able to understand that from the beginning and filter those people, I think, is really important as well. That was actually a real nice lead into my next question for you today, Austin. And I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your own entrepreneurial journey and some of the key lessons you've learned from it, apart from your, you know, the big one that you already shared just now. Yeah, absolutely, man. So I, I didn't have a typical entrepreneur startup. I mean basically what happened was i was buying and selling stuff on facebook at the time i was doing a little bit of drop shipping uh, i sold amazon fire sticks i put cody on them and sell them to people and at the same time i was going to college and i went to principles of financial accounting i was like yo how do i open a business i need to open a business because i want to do some liquidation auction stuff and he was like i don't know and then I got a little too busy selling stuff and I dropped out of university, right? And so I was living on my own, working with my brother at the time, buying and selling stuff on Facebook. He was doing the same in another state. And then we moved into liquidation auctions. And then from there, went full-time drop shipper, did that for a while. And then the business crashed, but it didn't just crash. It massively crashed. So... <laughs> So I had 10 EBA accounts. Running. This was before everybody knew about dropshipping. This was back when it was still a good business model. <laughs> I had 10 eBay accounts running and I had posted a DJI drone on one of them and it got flagged as a high risk product and I didn't know. And because of that, all of the eBay accounts that were linked to that IP address got instantly banned, right? And I don't know why I had five-star reviews on all of them but they just completely banned them on. So what they did was they refunded all the money to the customers immediately and the products were on the way. So I went from like making like, you know, 20, 30,000 a month to nothing immediately to having instant debt like that because <laughs> margins are really tight on, on drop shipping. They're, at that time it was like 35, 40% roughly. Now it's more like 10, 15, right? But so instantly I, I had debt and I was putting the orders on a credit card so I could gain miles and stuff. And 
I just got a bunch of chargebacks on the card, refunding all the customers and all the products went to the customer anyway, and I was out everything. And so, and I was in Argentina at the time. I'm actually in Argentina now too. Yeah, I just remember it was like, damn. And then we had to come up with tax money and we lost it because of this. And I basically had two months to be able to do it. And what I did was I called a friend and I was able to use one of their accounts and scale it up because I already kind of knew which products were selling and which ones were not. So I just took that knowledge and I was able to scale up on another account and kind of get myself out of that situation. This situation occurred multiple times, not not in the dropshipping world, but where I've built something and it's just crashed down on me entirely. Another time, so for a while I was doing composing music and editing mm-hmm. videos on Fiverr. And I was doing all right, I was making two, three thousand dollars a month. Nothing like super amazing, but you know, I, I wanted to well, I wanted to do music as my career. And so I had made that happen. It, it's not like I was making a lot, but it was it was okay. And I had this brilliant idea. I had a friend who made beats. I was like, hey, man, why don't you you put a gig on my profile, and make some beats, and I'll just take 10% because you're using, you know, my reputation. You can just make the rest, right? I was like, cool. So the dude used sampled beats. So, like, in the music world, there's these music samples, which are, like, pre-recorded little bits, and they come with licenses. And he used them without having the licenses, and we sent it to the guy, and he got a copyright strike. And they banned my Fiverr account. Oh, damn. (laughs) Yeah. And so at that time, I was in India, right? And so same thing happened. I had like $700 in open orders, got instantly refunded to all of my customers, and I lost the account. I eventually got the account back, but I was really stressed. And again, it was like about a month, a month and a half to recover. And after that, my account never really did well after that. It was like, Mm -hmm. it was like shadow banned or something, but I I made enough, but like it, it kind of struggled after that. But it just kind of goes to show the resilience of like being pushed up against a wall and being able to push through. I've I've had that happen so many times. Like even with Horizon, about three years ago, before we really defined what it is we did, there was a time where me, my co-founder, one of our designers, my girlfriend, and my co-founder's girlfriend were all living in a house in Ecuador. And same thing happened like we just we were trying to switch we were trying to pivot away from doing wordpress to doing django and i wasn't quite sure how to land these enterprise clients because the leap from wordpress to django is huge it's like a two thousand to a fifteen thousand dollar product it's a huge difference and the and the client's entirely different like wordpress is going to be like a normal entrepreneur django is going to be like a, a small business that actually you know has been around for a while so we were trying to make that transition and we had like a six eight month runway we'll come to the end of that runway like no money's coming in i'm still trying to make these sales nothing's happening but I actually ended up having to call my mom for groceries. I was like, hey, mom, dude, like, I, I need a couple hundred bucks <laughs> to feed these guys, to get these things going. We had a website we were about to turn in. And then we turned in the website. And then, like, three weeks later, I landed a $100,000 year contract. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it was just right there. And so I was really fighting against the wall, you know? And it's like, there's been so many times where this situation happened where like, it seems like everything's about to die. And that kind of manifests this energy of like, I have to make this work. Mm -hmm. They're like, there's no option. If you go into it thinking there's no option, either I do this or I'm going to die. Like, obviously you're not going to die, but, but if you go into it with that mindset, like you'd be really surprised what things can happen so so yeah i think that was one of the most important lessons that i've had built and crashed multiple things did kind of the same with marketing agency about like what like six years ago i tried to launch a marketing agency the difference with that is we got some good clients and i just handed them to some vas and i didn't train them and it was my fault Mm-hmm. It was my fault because I, w- I wasn't properly training them. I wasn't properly paying attention. I didn't have the right systems in place. Now I've grown a lot to know 
I know a little bit more about hiring. I know a little bit more about systems. I know more about like managing a team back then. I thought it was just like, here's what you do, blah, 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 blah. Now I encourage everybody on my team to be a leader. And so instead, like if they have innovation ideas, I'm like, great, let's try it. Let's see how it goes. If it doesn't go well, great. I'll take the fault. It's my fault. It didn't go well. You have nothing to do with that. You know, I told you to try it. It was my mm-hmm. decision. I think you've really highlighted the value that going through these kind of really tough and seemingly, you know, devastating situations can have on your overall, you know, professional and and professional development journey. Thanks for sharing all this with us, Austin. Just before we jump off the call and then drive the conversation to a close, if listeners would like to connect with you or learn even more about you, where can they do that? Yeah, so you can look up Austin Reed, R-E-E-D, on LinkedIn, or you can check out Mm horizon.dev. Okay, we'll make sure to also include that in the show notes. And Austin, thank you again for a great conversation and the great tips. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. Likewise. And to our listeners, that's all for this episode. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to check out our other episodes, you can find all of them at agiledrop.com slash podcast, as well as on all the most popular podcasting platforms. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes, and don't forget to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues.